Huh. Watching Kyle's unboxing videos again? Yeah, he always finds the coolest... No way! A robot dog? Gotta ask where he got it. Or use your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Just draw a circle around the dog on your screen, and it shows you where to buy it right in the app. Oh, I just learned a new trick. And that for once, I beat Kyle to the next big thing. Circle it, find it, with the new Galaxy S24 Ultra, and circle the search with Google. Get yours now at Samsung.com. Internet connection required. Results may vary based on visuals. Welcome into the 49er Access Podcast. My name is Sterling Bennett, and today we answer two big questions. Why is Eric Armstead so disrespected or feels so disrespected by the San Francisco 49ers? And are the Niners going to pay Brock Purdy $50 million on his neck contract extension? That's what we're diving into today. I want to ask you kindly to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for joining me, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube or X and Twitter. Uh, hope you're having a wonderful Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. It's MLB opening day, but we have some NFL and some Niners things to discuss. I want to say this. This coming Monday is the first mock draft Monday of the show. As soon as April hits... That's when we gear up for the NFL Draft, and this Monday, are not going to want to miss it. It's Mock Draft Monday, my first Mock Draft of the NFL uh, offseason, leading up to the NFL Draft later on in April. But forget all that stuff. Let's talk about the news of the last few days, and let's start with what happened today. So, last night, late last night... Uh, Eric Armstead's podcast, the Title League is the name of the podcast, um, name of the channel. They put out a teaser for his episode that came out today at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And in that teaser, it said, and it was a great teaser, it got me and everyone else to listen to it, that he felt disrespected by the San Francisco 49ers. And he, while they blurted out and bleeped it out, he mentioned a number total in which they offered him in regards to his pay cut he declined to take. So let's dive into the episode itself and why Eric Armstead felt and maybe was justified in being so disrespected by the San Francisco 49ers. So Eric Armstead starts the podcast out by saying he had three goals. He had three goals coming into this past season. Win a Super Bowl, make the Pro Bowl, and earn a third contract. Likely Eric Armstead potential last contract in the NFL. He's 31 years old as of right now. Defensive tackles that have lingering injuries usually don't play longer than the age of 33 and 34. Hence, Armstead going out of his way to say, I wanted to earn my last contract in the NFL. Now, um, he also did add to that in regards to his three goals, he wanted to make four years $80 million. He wanted to play till his age 34, 35 season and make $20 million on average each of his final four years in the NFL. Uh, now we know uh, of those three goals that he was striving for, two of them were met. <laughs> the first one, winning a Super Bowl, was not, unfortunately. Making a Pro Bowl, he says because he got hurt. He did not reach that goal, but his last goal he did meet. He is he has a massive contract from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, I do think that Eric Armstead knew, and he said this. Eric Armstead knew coming into the season that he was likely going to either need a restructure, an extension. They were going because of his contract and his age, and they just paid Javon Hargrave that you usually don't carry two highly paid defensive tackles. And he knew coming into the year that there could be an issue with his contract and he could be playing himself out of San Francisco. He knew. From the very beginning, he knew that this could be potentially his last year with the 49ers. Um, he did add that he got hurt in Week 13. He got hurt towards meniscus. He was told, you are going to need surgery. And later on, the minute he was told, you can play through this, he said, I have to get back on that field and prove to myself 
my team, other teams, that I'm still worth the money and I'm still the player I have been for the majority of my career. So uh, Armstead basically saying that he has to prove to himself, prove to others he was good enough to justify the money value he was currently making as of last year and the money he was going to ask for or wanted when it came to a restructure or extension. Um, now again, he knew those talks were coming. He was completely aware as to where his position sat with San Francisco and his cap value. Um, to his credit, while he can say he was disrespected, and we'll dive into exactly why, because I do think he was justified, um, he said he was the one. It wasn't the Niners. Eric Armstead said he was the one that initiated the contract extension contract restructure conversations with the Niners. And they agreed. They wanted to extend him further. Now, things unfold. They would not give him an exact amount as to what they wanted to pay him. He was shooting for four years, $80 million, which in return would have lowered his cap hit this year, but would have pushed a lot of that down the road. And San Francisco had to make a tough choice. Do you want to pay Eric Armstead and Javon Hargrave and potentially lose players elsewhere, or you can ask Eric Armstead to take a pay cut. And that is exactly why Eric Armstead said he was disrespected. Now, it wasn't the pay cut himself. The pay cut itself was not the issue for Eric Armstead. It was the numerical value in which they asked him to make. Uh, Eric Armstead's contract with the 49ers uh, last year uh, or at least his dead cap was going to be $28 million uh, this year with San Francisco. He was making uh, five years, $85 million. Uh, he had $17 million annual salary. Uh, he was making roughly $18 million last year, 28 of that going against uh, uh, the cap hit. They told him, we want you to make not 10, not 11, not 12, not even eight. They said, hey, Eric, we need you, if you want to stay here, to retain you, to keep you under the cap, to keep us with cap flexibility. We need you to make just $6 million, and we'll give you $2 million in incentives. So essentially, if Eric Armstead plays well as healthy, a one-year, $8 million contract extension. Uh, the minute I heard that, and I had heard rumblings of what they offered him to be very low, um, which I didn't know if those were true. They came out to be very true, and Armstead said he felt extremely disrespected, and the level of compensation that they offered him doesn't come close to the type of player that he is on the field and what represents him as a player and a person. Um, when I heard... <laughs> that they offered him $6 million base salary. A guy who, and look, San Francisco in this conversation is not a villain. I completely understand what San Francisco and why San Francisco offered him low money. We've talked about Eric Armstead pre-departure, post-departure. He was a good player. At times, a great player. Underrated during his time with the Niners. But... While $6 million is really low, I understand they're saying, how do we justify paying Hargrave and Armstead? Like, they're saying, hey, Eric, we'll keep you for $6 million. We can also cut you and free up 18 post-June. So, like, San Francisco, in a way, does have some leverage when it comes to cap flexibility when it comes to Eric Armstead's contract and trying to bring that down from him. But uh, I understand, like, what the Niners are doing. Why they asked him to take a pay cut to saying, hey, you missed large chunks of the past two seasons. You're getting older. Your play in the way has declined over the past two years, or at least if not declined, you aren't on, on the field as much and availability is the best ability. So if you aren't going to play 18 games, 20 games, you're not going to be next to Hargrave and Bosa and company for the majority of the season, despite you know, having great games and big moments and big games, um, we can't keep you for a $18 million, $28 million dead cap hit. That's just not feasible 
for us, knowing we had 20 free agents coming into this offseason. Um, so, like, I get it. I get it. <laughs> like, what the Niners did, they're not villains. Neither is Armstead. When Eric Armstead says, I felt extremely disrespected, and he added to that saying that it would be tough if I accepted that offer to come back into that building every single day, knowing that that's what I got compensated for, and that wasn't even close to my value. And I can dive into this for a little bit. Um, I was laid off recently, not for my current job, but I was laid off recently, and um, it hurt. I felt disrespected because I had been there longer. I had trained a handful of people that were there before me, and it was a, it was a big deal. Like it, I felt like I got you know, betrayed almost. That has lingered. Like, my relationship with some of those people aren't the same because of that. Eric Armstead, like, I'm not making millions of dollars, I wish, but Eric Armstead, like, imagine if they asked you, hey, you're making $50 an hour, let's say. Eh, you're not worth that anymore. We need you to make 15 to fill other roles. Like, imagine how disrespected you would feel like, well, the guys at the top tell them to take pay cuts now the difference here for eric armstead he was the guy at the top <laughs> like you're 28 million dollars in dead cap you are one of the guys at the top eric uh, so i get san francisco wanting to you know free up some money armstead was the clearest the, the clearest path to doing so with a player that i don't want to say is you know replaceable or easily replaceable but by all intents and purposes, he's already been replaced. <laughs> um, so I don't blame San Francisco. I don't blame Eric Armstead for feeling that way. Why wouldn't you? Uh, he also did add to that, and, and he did say that as a player, been in San Francisco for, what, nine seasons, seven under Kyle, I believe, been there from the beginning, pre-Kyle, with Trent Baalke, Chip Kelly, like, been there, the longest tenured Niner as of last season. Um, like, in his mind, he's like, I'm a Bay Area kid. I went to college in Oregon. This is my hometown team. This is who I grew up watching. Like, this is me. Like, I am a Niner. Niners are me, right? And for Eric to then add on to that and say, like, it wasn't just about me. It was about other guys in my shoes in the future. Like, if Eric Armstead takes that pay cut, like he said himself, and he walks into the practice field onto the Levi Stadium turf or grass... With a $6 million contract, what is to stop other teams around the league to say, well, Armstead took that pay cut, you should too. Well, Armstead's a team player. Brandon Ayuk, you're not. Armstead, 18 mil to 6, man, who else can we gouge for you know $12 million in cap space? Now, again, that's business. That's football. There's, there's a cap hit you cannot go over. He was a casualty of that. It sinks. And Armstead himself said he holds no animosity towards Kyle or John, as he shouldn't. It's a business. There have been plenty of players. Pre-Armstead, he ain't the first, he ain't the last. Ayuk could be very similar to him. Hey, Ayuk, we don't want to pay two receivers $25 million on average. Will you take a little bit of a pay cut? Give us a hometown discount, please. When he's like, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm an ascending star. I'm not taking less money to stay here. Now, I th think they pay him, but like Armstead said, no. St stood on his values, good for him, and got paid elsewhere. Like, he can say he felt disrespected. That's fine. You got disrespected by an organization that had their hands tied. Like, who else did you want them to cut, move off of? They didn't bring back, you know, 15 guys that left. They added players, signed others. Like, who was actually back this year that's a big name? I can't think of one big name they've re-signed that was an unrestricted free agent. You got Juwan Jennings. He was the restricted guy. They didn't bring back a big name. What Demetrius Flanagan Falls, Brandon Allen, Ben Barch. Colton McKivitz, who they extended. I guess John Feliciano is probably the biggest thing they brought back this year. Like, there was no other route other than having to disrespect Eric Armstead 
to make a way to sign players, to actually just fuel the team. Like, if they don't disrespect him. Now, you can say, seriously, like, you couldn't give him 12. Maybe they could have. But we have no idea what their plan was the day before free agency. What if it was, we're going to try for Daniil Hunter. And they were like, Eric, we want to keep you. Need you to take $6 million, not 12. Your extra, whatever it will be, will help us. And it would have given them more money earlier to maybe make that big splash. Who knows? Now that the money's pushed back to June 2nd, June 1st, and they're not going to have it until they can re-sign Ayuk and maybe a Brock Purdy or add other players down the road. So that, to me, felt like San Francisco had a plan in place, and I have no idea if they pitched that to them and said maybe they did say, hey, we're going to pair you with Hunter or, you know, Josh Uche, whoever else was in free agency again, you know, and we're going to have this amazing elite defensive line. And, you know, he said, no, like, I want to get paid. And rightfully so. Like, Armstead has every right to say, nope, that's my contract. You signed it. I signed it. I am not budging. Just as San Francisco has the right to say, see you later. <laughs> like, so you can feel disrespected. Like, they almost traded you. And again, I I'm not coming down Armstead's road, but it's like, what did you want them to do? Like, you knew coming into the year that... My contract set myself up to potentially be on the outs. And sometimes you expect things to happen. Like, again, going back to going back to me being laid off, there are fine people left and right. Gone, gone, gone. And I was like, am I going to be next? No, not me. No way. I am so invaluable to this organization. And it was like, bang. Hey, Sterling. Making cuts. And I was like, little old me? <laughs> like, you want my... X amount of salary off the books? Like, what am I making to affect the top top end here? Uh, but the difference is Eric was the top end. Eric was the top tier guy. You're not cutting Bosa. You're not cutting Javon Hargrave, who you just signed. Like, you're actively looking to extend people. They tried to extend you, Eric. Just at a really cheap price. Rightfully so, you said no. Good for you. I wish Eric Arms had the best in Jacksonville. Go crush it. Go bring back the Duval chance. Go bring back Saxonville. Trevor Lawrence is out there. ETN. They, they got some guys. They got some guys. Go kill it in Jacksonville. And I think that's what Fluffy Ninja is saying in the chat now. Good luck in Jacksonville. I feel like releasing Eric Arms, that was a great move for the Niners franchise. Sometimes it hurts to lose people you love. There have been plenty of times in my life. You have a friend girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it was, whoever it is for you, like, you can love that person. You can care about that person. Sometimes to further yourself, to better yourself. Like, if you went to college, you know this, boyfriends and girlfriends that go into college together usually don't last until Thanksgiving. That's the end date for them. Like, because you want to better yourself, further yourself, and view this new pool of people and expand your life. Go different directions. That's all San Francisco's doing. They came to a point. They said, hey, like we, we have a crossroads here, Eric. We, we want you to be here. We want you in our lives. We appreciate you. But our Thanksgiving break is upon us. <laughs> are we going to break up? Are we going to reevaluate our relationship and, and move on? Or stay together? And Armstead said, you know what? I'm good, man. See you later. It happens. That's the way it goes. Uh, Bobo asks a good question. Uh, did they say they were really close to a compromise and a restructure, though? Um, my understanding was that they were not close on any of those, a restructure or a new deal, but he was almost traded to the Texans for Malik Collins, and that trade fell apart. Um, now... Who knows why it fell apart. Maybe it was them winning also that 7th round draft pick. But at the end of the day, Malik Collins is now in San Francisco. <laughs> so whatever reason that fell apart, it did feel like San Francisco offered him a deal. He said, mm. he gave them a chance to reconsider to, you know, he countered. They did not recounter from his own words. So he may have said, how about 14? They may have said, Pack your bags, buddy. 
get out. <laughs> uh, we wish you well on your future endeavors. Um, and I just think that, you know, it, it, like, it sucks to lose Armstead, but if it makes us better. And he's in Florida now. He's out of California. He got a lot less taxes over there. He got the beach. He got the humidity. He got Disney World. Like, there, California is great. That's where I live, right? Weather's great besides the last couple of weeks. But, like, you go to Florida, like, people love Florida for a variety of reasons. It's like you go to South Beach, Miami, like... Armstead will be just fine out there with Jacksonville in the Everglades, right? Um, and I wish him well. Like, he's going to get to play against Demeco and and Stroud and Anthony Richardson. He will have plenty of opportunities. Like, they're going to be a good team. Like, they can win the AFC South. They can be a top seed in the AFC. Like, it's not like he's playing for the Titans or... Um, in sort of like Washington or, or or the Panthers, he's playing for a pretty good team that just has to bounce back after a bad season, right? Uh, but there was no deal in place in regards to restructuring him. It was they were going to trade him to Demeco Ryan's in Houston. I fell apart. Um, Ezra Pound. Ezra is always like Ezra, always in the chat, always on Twitter. Good guy, Ezra. Good guy. Um, John Lynch struck out with Solomon Thomas and Javon Hargrave. Does he try for a defensive tackle in this year's draft? So, obviously, it depends on how the draft board breaks down and falls in San Francisco's lap. Who's there, right? Um, I have done, in preparation for Mock Draft Monday, to get an idea as to who's going to be there at 31, you know, you do 20 mock drafts, 30 mock drafts, and say, okay, like, this is the consensus grouping of players I like. I can tell you right now, mock drafts this year are crazier than they've ever been. And it mainly stems down to quarterbacks, right? Bo Nix might go 12 to the Broncos, and you're like, seriously? <laughs> like, how is that even a pick in a mock draft in the first round? Like, you need to fix your simulators, um, and you see Michael Penix in the first round, and you see, you know, Caleb Williams not going number one overall, which is going to happen. Um, but going back to Ezra's question, will San Francisco draft a defensive tackle? Um, in the draft entirely, yes, they need one. Whether it's round one or seven, they have to have one. Um, in the first round, it depends. I am someone who has my eyes on Chris Jenkins in the second. Now, will he be there? That's, that's the NFL draft. Who knows, right? Uh, but I do think it's important for San Francisco, knowing you just let Armstead go, for a good reason, um, brought Emily Collins, his contract's not guaranteed after this season, and you want to get younger, you want to extend your window, uh, it would benefit San Francisco, first, second, third, top of the draft, right, uh, to replace, or, you know, replace to add a new defensive tackle next to Hargrave. You can go into this year with Collins and Elliott and, and Givens and, and Clea Davis and uh, a rookie or two. That's fine. That's great. But you have to find a replacement, uh, quote-unquote, for Eric Armstead. Now, it can be a totally different player. Um, I have a feeling that they like, I think it's Mason Smith from LSU um, or, or it's Wingo from LSU, both those guys, different players entirely. I do think it would benefit San Francisco, at least this year, to draft a run-stopping um, defensive tackle. That was supposed to be Javon Kinlaw. It wasn't. Um, and you have Elliott, who's a better run defender than Malik Collins. Malik Collins is a pass-rushing uh, defensive tackle. And you do want to give yourself flexibility to have Yeter Grossmatos inside and outside, but you also don't just want to have him playing defensive tackle on rundowns. Um, so I think you would benefit San Francisco to, you can have Hargrave and Malik Collins on passing downs, but you go get a big body guy like Mason Smith from LSU if he's there in the second round as your run stuffing defensive tackle, um, and pair him next to Hargrave. It's a pretty good onslaught of defensive tackles you have in that room. Uh, so of course they're, they're going to draft one. If they don't, I will be shockingly surprised. Chris Jenkins, Mason Smith, uh, if they want to go, another pass rushing defensive tackle. Uh, I'm forgetting his first name, but it's Wingo from LSU. He is just one of the best first steps in the entire draft. He's incredible. Um, he could be a third round or late second round pick. Uh, 
I would look to those guys. Uh, I don't think it would be wise unless I, you know, a stud, Byron Murphy, a Newton from Syracuse is up there. If those, if one of those guys fall, then we're having a different conversation. But I have a hard time believing, knowing how highly those guys are touted, they're going to be there. Uh, so I, I do think, Ezra, yes, that they do replace or they draft the defensive tackle, pair him with arms or with Hargrave, excuse me, and get their quote unquote Eric Arms the replacement. They have to get a run stopper. They do not have one yet. Elliott's fine. Bosa's good. Leonard Floyd's, you know, like they, they have some pieces, right? They don't have that one just mean, just bulky human, like bowling ball, you know, they don't have their DJ Jones. They're just mean, gruff, just I'm going to crush a, uh, a ball carrier in the backfield. Like they need to have that guy. Um, it, I'm telling you, if Mason Smith is there, it's M-A-A-S-O-N, Smith, Melishu. That is just, oh, put him in this system. You have yourself the five tech you've wanted. <laughs> like, forget Kinlaw, forget Thomas. Just, oh, you give me Mason Smith next to Hargrave on, on, on rundowns. Boy, <laughs> we're having some fun. Uh, but again, back to Armstead. Be your, be, feel disrespected. That's fine. You you yourself said, I expected this to happen. So it is what it is. Like, what do you want us to do? Like, he's speaking this truth. And that's fine. The reality of it is, that's football. That's life. That's free agency. How many guys got cut? A lot of them got cut. A lot of people get cut all the time. Like, Tredavious White has been an amazing cornerback for the Bills. Tore his ACL, tore his Achilles. While he was hurt, they cut him and said, See ya, now he's in the Rams. Like, great players get cut every single day for a variety of reasons. All arms that is, despite it hurting, is another stick in the wall. Um, all right, let's go to Brock Purdy. Because Jed York, in a way, kind of put his foot in his mouth. <laughs> and it made me laugh. Because, like, I understand we're discussing the inevitable. They are going to pay Brock Purdy. What I don't understand is even if you're asked a question about him, even if you are, hey, you gotta pay Brock, like, why would you even say a number value when you have to pay Brandon Ayuk this offseason? Like, if San Francisco was asked, John Lynch, Shanahan, Jay York, hey guys, you have to pay Ayuk, you know, blah, 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 whatever the question is, right? And one of them said, well, you know, Ayuk's going to ask for around 35 you know, million dollars on average and about 65 guaranteed. Why would you say that? You are already setting yourself up in public for Ayuk to now say, well, that's the number you said, friend. If that's what you're willing to, or that's what you think I'm going to ask for, by all means, here's the contract. And they're going to slide it over. And it's like, why? Like, Brock Purdy can't even be extended until next offseason. I get it. It's going to happen. Why are we talking about it? But they're talking about it. And unfortunately, when you get caught off guard, or in this case, you just open your mouth when you shouldn't, you say things that you shouldn't say. And Jed York, unintentionally, I think, put his foot in his mouth. Um, I'll read you both the quotes he has. So, one thing I can firmly agree with, that Jed York's first quote is, I think that's a good problem when your quarterback is one of the highest paid guys on your team in the league. That makes sense. That means you've hit on the quarterback. That means you have your franchise player. No disagreement here from me. None. Like, you're right, Jed. If your highest paid player is your quarterback, that means you hit on said player. Whether it's Jimmy G, Trey Lance, like, had any one of those guys, when they were at their peak, got the contract, which I know Jimmy did, but a week later it was the lowest, or like 12th again, <laughs> right? But you hit on Brock Purdy. He's going to be one of your highest paid players because you hit on Brock Purdy. Great, you're right, Jed. Then he says, there's a lot of planning going into that. But I'm glad we have Prague, John Lynch, and Kyle. They're the ones that are going to figure it out and narrow down the details. I just have to sign the check. 
And right there, right there, Jed, is what you should have done. <laughs> you should have said, I don't have to deal with it. I don't have to be in negotiations. All I got to do is put pen to paper and say, congrats, Brock. You're the franchise quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. But what did good old Jetty boy do? And I like Jed. Uh, Bobo says he's still an immature kid that happens on the Niners. Uh, I think Jed's come a long way from his first couple years, the Harbaugh era, to now. He's a different person. He's learned a lot. He will tell you, I was wrong, that he was stubborn. Like, Jed has learned a lot. <laughs> um, some things you still have to learn, though, and it's prematurely talking about things that, well, yes, you can say, we love Brock, he's a great player, we plan to get him paid. We like When talking about Nick Bosa and George Kittle and Fred Warner and Ayuk and Debo, what have they not done? mentioned a numerical value and matched it next to their name. You want to know why? It sets parameters for a contract. Like, that's, like, if you go, like, I used to watch Pawn Stars all the time. You never make the first offer. You never make the first offer. Once you make the first offer, you give the other guy leverage. Leverage. Never make the first offer. Jed, in a way, essentially made the first offer. Whether he's wrong or not, he made the first offer. By saying this next quote. Brock is going to ask for something that no one has ever asked for before. Brock's going to ask for something no one has ever asked for before. I don't know how many players are going to make $40 million annually as a quarterback right now. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Why, even if you're right, why say any number? And if you're, <laughs> just say, we'll pay Brock. Why, like, whether it was 30 or 40 or $75 million, what do you not do? They will pay him. He'll ask for the highest amount ever. I don't know how many guys are getting $40 million right now. And Brock's like, whoa, man. I can make forty million dollars a year. You're 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 giving Brock Purdy and his representation leverage. You've already put a money value out there into the ether, in public. It's all over the news. And again, it doesn't mean they're not going to pay him. It doesn't mean Jed's even wrong. In fact, I think Brock's going to make over forty million dollars. He might make over fifty, right? But why would you say that? <laughs> So, what will Brock Purdy make? Since Jed has set the baseline, $40 million per average, on average, that is now the baseline for Brock Purdy's contract. Ultimate foot-to-mouth for Jed York. And he's right. Like, he's not wrong by saying Brock Purdy's going to make $40 million. He's 100% right. Brock's going to make more than that. <laughs> like, no matter what Jed said, but again, you don't make that first offer. Because what if Brock Purdy came in low? What if Brock Purdy said $40 million? And you're like, yes, bargain, let's do it. Now Brock's like, well, they already said 40 <laughs> I'm going to ask for 55 And it's like, <laughs> Jed, the owner of the San Francisco 49ers, this is business 101. I have a journalism degree, I never stood stepped foot in the business building. And I know that. <laughs> you know that. Like, if you have, like, you go to a garage sale. The, the sign might say $10. But we all know. We all know. You can go to there. Hey, this lamp is 10 bucks. Can I get it for 8 Can I get it for 7 You can barter. You can, you know, dwindle down a price, right? This ain't a garage sale, though, Jed. This is the NF freaking fell. <laughs> like, people are greedy. And again, one of the questions here in, in Bobo, hopefully Brock takes a Tom Brady route, takes a blue average money, keep the team around him. Maybe that's the case. I wouldn't expect so. 
I wouldn't expect anybody, especially Mr. Irrelevant, the last pick in the draft, Brock Purdy, that has barely made $5 million in his entire career so far after going to two NFC championships, going to a Super Bowl, almost winning the MVP this year. If I'm Brock Purdy, I'm like, no, you, you got to pay me for what I did the past two years as well. Now, Brock isn't that kind of guy. Maybe I'm just greedy. Money's great, right? But, sure, like, Tom Brady was doing that to win. Purdy could do that. Let me ask you guys this, though. When is, when's the last quarterback, outside of Tom Brady, to take a team-friendly pay cut, to keep the team together? They'll restructure. That's not taking a pay cut. You're just kicking that can. Like, Mahomes continues to restructure. Josh Allen continues to restructure. They're going to get paid the money anyways. Just 10 years later, 8 years later. If I'm Brock Purdy, I'm like, you gotta, you, you gotta back pay me, man. <laughs> like, you have to give me some friggin' moolah because I wasn't getting any the past two years. I need two Brink trucks, buddy. Like, I've earned all this money. And I've made less than five mil. Like, I want back pay, my friends. And, and look, um, I think that Brock Purdy, looking at quarterback contracts now, if Jed is saying $40 million is the baseline, well, Jed, I'll tell you this right now. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four. Oh, excuse me. Uh, let's see if we can get it here. Uh, you know, a live podcast takes some work, some production behind the scenes, right? Um, let's see. We got Mahomes, 45 on average. Burrow's 55. Herbert is 52. Jackson's 52. Hertz is 51. Murray, like... You have about 14, 15 quarterbacks making $40 million and up, Jed. And I'll tell you this right now. Brock is better than Daniel Jones. He's beat Dak twice. He's beat Matthew Stafford. Like, he's better than Kirk Cousins. And if you think he's on par with him, fine. Kyler Murray's making $46 million on average. Deshaun Watson's making $46 million on average. Jalen Hurts... $51 $51 million on average. So, Jed, like Robbie uh, agrees with me in the chat, took all your leverage away, buddy. What do you mean? I don't know how many quarterbacks making $40 million. Half! Half of them, my friend, are making $40 million. And Brock's beaten half of them before. Dak, Kirk, Deshaun, like, Kyler, Hurts, like... I get you can obviously dive into, well, is Brock Mahomes, is Brock Burrow, and those are conversations that are going to happen. Conversations that'll, you know, it's a fluid conversation. of Is Brock Purdy really worth $55 million a year? That's Joe Burrow's top mark. Okay, 12 quarterbacks make $40 plus million. Nine make $43 plus million. And four of them make over 50. Joe Burrow makes $55 million a year on average. I don't think Brock Purdy's worth $55 million. No. I don't think Brock Purdy thinks he's worth that. But would I be befuddled and be like, Oh my god! Aghast! I, I've lost my breath. I'm surprised. If Brock Purdy doesn't come in in a year's time and say, Hey Jed. Hey Kyle. Hey Prog. Hey John. Jalen Hurts is making $51 million. I destroyed him last year. I've proven to you that I can be darn near the MVP. And Lamar Jackson, he beat me. He's making 52. If Brock Purdy walked into negotiations at $51.5 million, would you be shocked? No. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be shocked at all. And neither should Jed. Now that you said the baseline's $40 million. Like, sure, 12 quarterbacks are making that. Is Brock Purdy the 12th best quarterback in football? I don't think so. Is he the best? No, he's not. Mahomes is, by far. Mahomes is making... (laughs) Mahomes is making 45, my friend. Like, and there are 
a ton of other quarterbacks making more than Mahomes that are not better than him. Deshaun, Kyler, Jalen, Lamar, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow. Like, Jed York saying a numerical value, does it change the whole process? No, it doesn't. But you already start saying numbers. You essentially made the first offer. And Brock Purdy's like, man, $40 million? Hmm. I'm better than Dak. I'm, I'm a lot better than Dak. What does Dak want? What have I won? Man, I'm way better than Daniel Jones. Okay, Matthew Stafford, great. He's 34 years old. Like, Brock Purdy walks in to negotiations now with even the tiniest sliver of leverage. Now, do I think Brock gets $56 million and resets the whole market? No, I don't. I don't think anybody in the entire league, like, if Brock Purdy was a free agent, who and what, what would that contract look like? It would probably look like Kirk Cousins' contract, right? Was it four years, $45 million a year? About Mahomes' money? Okay. But Purdy's younger than Kirk Cousins. Not injured like Kirk Cousins. Completely healthy. He's younger. Has already kind of surpassed Kirk Cousins amongst the NFL talk, uh, uh, media, and coaches and everything. Like, people view Brock Purdy, albeit somewhat equal to, a little higher than Kirk Cousins. Okay, well, it's 2025 next year. That cap is going up. Deshaun got 46, and he was diddling people with the massage table. Purdy's like, I'm a good Christian boy. I just got married. <laughs> like, you're going to have to give me 50. Like, like come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm not trying to get vulgar, but like, this is not a hard conversation to have. If Deshaun's getting 46, Kyler's getting 46.1, like, Brock Purdy's fitting right in between Kyler and Jalen. 46.1 and $51 million. Like, that is the sweet spot for a Brock Purdy deal. It gives you $5 million to work with of, are you on the high end, the low end? But who knows how much that cap hit or how much the cap goes up next year. Like, you don't want selfish players. No one likes selfish players, right? Nobody wants Ayuk to ask for $29 million per year. But we get that right? Hence why guys get cut, they get traded, but like, this is a quarterback. It's not a receiver. It's not a running back. This is not a punter, which San Francisco's paying good money to punters <laughs> and kickers, right? Like, this is a quarterback. You don't have a quarterback, you ain't winning. Like, Brock Purdy's gonna walk into that room and say, you know, guys, like, you thought Jimmy was the guy. <laughs> you were wrong. You thought Trey Lance was the guy. Look how dumb you look now. Man, I'm the guy. I saved your entire season two years ago. Then I followed it up off a of UCL tear to a better season. The only way, and I don't even want to guarantee this, the only way Brock Purdy's not making north of $46 million on average in his next contract is if he completely collapses. If he has this, this this unholy, catastrophic season. Whether it's an injury, or it's just piss poor play and he gets benched. That is the only way Brock Purdy's not making 46 plus million dollars once his contract negotiations start. And if he takes a big discount, great. I tell you now, 40 already was the starting point but now you've raised a level jet like now it's 45 now it's pay me like Mahomes now it's 46 pay me like Kyler and I like Kyler like what <laughs> like Kirk Cousins got 45 million dollars from the Falcons off a of torn Achilles and Brock Purdy's like Hoo -hoo, man I like people would pay Brock 45 million dollars not 50 sure 47 maybe like he's gonna get paid like now information man show does say this let's see how he does next season right like 
Purdy cannot be paid until after this year. The only reason why this is a conversation, like everyone knows that Brock Purdy's not getting paid this offseason. He he can't even get paid this offseason. He's not physically allowed to get paid (laughs) this offseason or this season. Now, they can talk contracts. They can verbally agree to a deal and sign it next offseason. But we wouldn't even be discussing this had Jed York, good old Jetty boy, not brought this up. And again, even if you're asked about it, Jed, do what John Lynch does. Go back and watch every press conference during the Bosa negotiations, uh, the Fred Warner negotiations, Debo. Like, they never say a number because they're in active negotiations. Unfortunately for Jed, even if San Francisco, and I don't think they were, or, or even are, in active negotiations with Brock, you are now. <laughs> like, that is... Like, you have fired the gun to say, go. You have started the race to pay Brock Purdy by... And again, like, is Brock going to walk in there and say, you know, back in March, Jed, you said 40. No. But what it does is, is it allows Brock and his agent, if he has another great season, to say, oh, you thought starting at 40? Oh, no. 46, brother. Or 51. Like, it's, I don't want to come down too hard on Jed because is it really that big of a deal? No, it's not. But, it's just not smart. Like, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I make plenty of mistakes. I also don't own the Niners. (laughs) I'm not in charge of millions of fans' happiness, running an organization, answering to my god Roger Goodell, and trying to pay 53-plus players on a team. Like, I'm not Jed York, man. Like, I'm not John Lynch. Like, you just don't, like, you open a door and expect nobody to go, Oh, what's in here? $46 million a year? Oh, who would have thought? Like, 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 what are you thinking? <laughs> like, like Robbie says again, I bet John and Lynch and Parag were furious. I would be too. I'd be like, what the heck, Jed? Like... We were like we're trying to get Ayuk wrapped up, and you're talking about Brock Purdy. Seriously, like like you are talking about next year stuff. We're focusing on now. Like Armstead saying he's disrespected. Ayuk's like pay me, and you're talking about Brock Purdy and his contract. Not even how like when they asked Kyle Shanahan about Brock Purdy, he was like, "I love him. He's a great player. Love to coach him. Gonna get better." Talked about him playing. Jed, you are the oh, now the owner. You are the the majority owner of the San Francisco 49ers now. You are the the one man that people go to answers for. You are the face of ownership of the Niners. And your response was, "How many quarterbacks are making 40 million dollars, man?" Half, Jed. Half. <laughs> like w- like what are you doing? <laughs> like again, it's not that big of a deal. But Brock Purdy's coming off of record-setting seasons. Like, they owe something to him already. That contract was already going to be big. And Jed said, you know what? I'm going to take my foot and put it right in my mouth when it comes to discussing next year's offseason plan. Like, we all know that they're going to pay Ayuk, hopefully. Hopefully extend Juwan Jennings for a year. Lower their cap hits now create a ton of carryover cap into next year hope next year's salary cap goes up again restructure some more people and say oh brock we have a contract and give it to him that's the plan (laughs) like that is the most feasible logical plan and it's not that that plan still can't come to fruition or can't work but san francisco just told Eric Armstead to buzz off if you don't want to take a, you know a $12 million uh, 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 words um, take a $12 million reduction in pay so buzz off we'll save 18 and push it off till June 2nd $6 million mattered that much to San Francisco 
12 million dollars this year matter that much to San Francisco. That's how much they wanted to save on Armstead. In one year, did not want to pay him over $9 million. You wonder why? They wanted that carryover cap. <laughs> like, <laughs> they wanted the carryover cap. It's like, man. Like, and it's not like Brock's the only guy they have to pay. And Jason Hurley, who does great stuff. Great work with the cap. If Brock keeps it up, another MVP-like season, he's getting 50-plus. Exactly. Exactly, Jason. Like, you have, and, and you're right, you have to structure it correctly. You have to structure it right, lower some cap hits, like they do all these players. Fred and Debo and everyone else. Like, they have put, and they have structured outs in contracts, like Debo, for a reason. You're 29 years old, if you can got the contract, save some money. But they have to pay guys like Lenore, Hufunga, Mooney Ward. Like, it's not like Brock's the only guy. And if Jed saying $40 million is the baseline, and you lose Hufunga. You lose Lenore. You can't pay a Mooney Ward the money he wants, and he leaves, and you weaken your team in return. Now, again, this may not happen, but it opens the door. <laughs> and if I'm the Niners, and I'm sitting back like, man, like we have a great team. We can win it all right now. Let's keep the core together. What do you do? You don't put out numerical values on contracts you're not ready to pay yet you can put a plan together i'm all for planning ahead i'm getting married in almost two months it's been about 12 months of planning <laughs> like you got cakes you got you got dresses and you got you know suits and ties and, and get everything i'm all for planning ahead you have to in certain cases you know what you don't do you say, you know what? We're only going to pay $10,000 for a wedding. When we all know weddings are the most expensive thing on the freaking planet, and you're going to go over your budget anyways. Don't do that. Like, don't do that. You go into it and say, let's find the right price. The best price on everything. Like, you got a budget. That's fine. You got to do you. The difference is, this ain't a wedding. This ain't a, we can cut here and cut there. My wedding doesn't hinge on my marriage. <laughs> if, if my wedding sucks, my marriage can still be great. <laughs> if Brock Purdy, <laughs> like if you lose stars on your team, you lose all these pieces because you set a budget you can't meet, you get worse. Even if Brock is still there. And I love Brock. Brock had an amazing season. An amazing season. Almost an MVP. Like, Brock can take a pay cut. He can get better. He can elevate the team. Like, no one's taking those out of the conversation. But, it's like, Jed, buddy, friend, buddy old pal, companion, compatriot. What are you doing? He's you acting dumb, buddy. You're saying dumb things you shouldn't just yet. Like, don't do that. Like, don't do that. Um, Robbie says here, uh, he never sees anyone say, is Kyle, John, Jed, the team, believe in him, uh, so much that they risk the reputation and cutting Trey. Like, I think they prepared to pay him 50. So, or what Robbie's saying is that the Niners, everyone, Kyle, John, Jed, Parag, the whole team, have said, we believe in Brock Purdy. They, he thinks they're, prepar they're preparing to pay him 50, as they should. Like, Kyle's calling him the real deal after, like, the third practice of OTAs in training camp two years ago. Like, he moved off the guy he traded up three first-round draft picks for and was like, meh, we have Brock, it's fine. Like, sure, money plays into that conversation, his low cap hit and his low salary, sure. But, and that's why you have to win. Like, last year, I mean, when you lost, you have to win those games. But when you know you have the guy, like... When you know you're going into a, into a big business meeting, like, oh, you know, hey, okay, we're going to make our pitch to you. You can ask for a lot of money. They can respond and say, mm, how about X, Y, Z? Then you make your counteroffer and then go from there. Jed literally, instead of, you know, writing on a note card and sliding it over and being like, how's this sound? He was like, hey, how does this sound right here? How does $40 million sound right now? 
why? <laughs> like, why, why you do that, man? Like, there really isn't even much to say. It's just like, it's just stupid. <laughs> like, you didn't need to do that. <laughs> oh, man. Like, I love Jed York because he does stuff like this. And you're like, man, wow, okay. <laughs> like, it wasn't like it was just unannounced and he's coming out and being like, we're paying Brock Purdy $40 million. It was like, he was asked about the quarterbacks and Brock Purdy. But like, you have to get a better answer than that, my friend. Like, there's a way to politic. Like, if your boss comes and talks to you, you're not going to talk to your boss the way you talk to your friends. I know I don't. Like, you're not going to talk to your boss the way you talk to a fellow employee. You're not there. You got a politic. And sure, you're the boss, but that's the media. In a way, in a weird way, Brock Purdy is the boss in this case because he can walk. <laughs> he can say, "No, nah, I'm good." The Vikings they almost signed me a couple years ago uh, when I was almost not drafted. I'm going to go to Minnesota and play with Kevin O'Connell. Like that's an option. Like if they don't come to a deal, he can leave. He can say, see ya, adios. So, like, why set parameters that you will likely meet, but don't need to be discussed now? It's like having a conversation with your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend on things two years down the road, and you're like, 2026? It's 2024. Why are we talking about this now? Like, that's, we'll talk about that then, <laughs> like, later. Like, closer to the point of action, not two years in advance, a year in advance. Like, right about now is when you would hear, Brock Purdy has agreed to a $51 million per year sent to San Francisco. And Jed's like, well, watch this, $40 million. <laughs> like, Jed, you don't need to do that, my friend. Like, you just don't. Um, Ezra Pound asks a question that is, quarterback related not Brock Purdy related uh, quarterbacks always get hurt will San Francisco draft a quarterback so um I've gone back and forth on this because pre Joshua Dobbs signing I would have said yes it makes sense to have a camp body in there um, my understanding was that the quarterback number two was gonna be Brandon Allen um he has guaranteed money they said, you know what, we want to insulate that room more. Get a better backup quarterback, which Joshua Dobbs is much better than Brandon Allen. Um, but now they have two quarterbacks behind Brock Purdy making guaranteed money. That, to me, solidifies that room. Uh, it doesn't mean that those guys are you know, guaranteed spots on the roster, but um, like Nate Sudfeld two years ago, he had guaranteed money, and San Francisco said that Brock Purdy kid's special were keeping him over Nate Sudfeld. Um, so it isn't to say that Brandon Allen's job is locked in, you know, in, in locked in place and he's guaranteed a spot, but I think it means San Francisco is more likely to sign an undrafted quarterback, get them into camp, knowing the odds of them ever playing is slim to none and basically zero. Like the odds of them making the team are basically zero, right? Knowing you have Purdy, Dobbs, and Allen. Um, and I think the I think NFL changed the rule where the third emergency quarterback can be a can be a practice squad guy, so it doesn't like maybe that's a conversation to have around quarterbacks of like you can cut Brandon Allen and your third quarterback could be a young rookie, a practice squad player that doesn't take up a roster spot on Sundays, um, which is pretty interesting, or doesn't take up a, a roster spot during the season, right? So, um, maybe, like, I, I think it was named Devin Leary from, I think, Duke, maybe. A, a lot of fans like, I like him a lot. Um, but it feels more like San Francisco is going towards the UDFA route in regards to quarterbacks. Um, I also think, like, I do wonder what San Francisco's mindset of quarterbacks will be once they have to pay Brock Purdy. You can sign two backup quarterbacks and give them guaranteed money, behind Brock because Brock's making nothing right I do wonder what that mindset will be after they pay Brock I, I don't think you're going to find yourself with two quarterbacks as quarterback two and three behind Purdy being you know guaranteed or having guaranteed money I think it'll be one guy um but the quarterback room to me right now is 
kind of done. Like, it's off my draft board. I think it's solidified. Um, I think that, like, there is no need to waste a draft pick on a quarterback knowing you have a guy. Like, Dallas didn't draft one. Uh, the Falcons didn't draft one or won't draft one this year because they have Kirk. Um, Chargers ain't doing it. Bills ain't doing it. Ravens ain't doing it. Eagles ain't doing it. Cardinals ain't doing it. Like, if you think Purdy, who will be paid alongside Hurts, Murray, and those guys, if those teams aren't doing it, and Brock, in a way, has outperformed them, why would you do it? Um, now, I'm all for having a good backup. That's fine. We need that. Um, I, I don't... I, Drafting a quarterback seems like it's like, nah, like that is the furthest need of this team. Um, Robbie again says, uh, when John Lynch said, we budgeted for Bosa, I think Bosa's agent heard that and said, really, bro? Right, like, <laughs> like, you budgeted for Bosa, you may have made a budget. Doesn't mean it's the same one Bosa has said for himself. <laughs> like, and that's what makes a player hold out until week one. Meanwhile, Brock is like, you know, like, it would it would be hilarious. Hilarious. And I don't think this is true. But it'd be hilarious if Brock was like, oh man, like, I'll ask for $35 million uh, per year. And as soon as Jed said 40, he said, 40? We're asking for 40? <laughs> like, honey, we're getting $40 million next year? Like, <laughs> it would just, it would make me just bust up laughing if that was the case. And Jed, unknowingly... Like, rose Purdy's price up through the roof and was like, we can get more than 35 oh my god. Like, I'm just married, we can buy a mansion now. <laughs> like, it would make me laugh so hard. Like, because, like, again, the comment doesn't need to be made. And Jed was like, watch this. <laughs> it's like, like, knowing Purdy, how humble he is when he goes to Iowa to shuck corn and be in the fields. Like, he could have been asking for something less. I don't think he was, but let's say he was. And Jed's like, oh crap, this rose that price up. And John and Kyle are like, are you freaking serious, man? S stop talking. Stop talking. You're making this worse. Like, now we can't pay you Funga. Now we can't pay Lenore. Like, can you shut up? <laughs> uh, Gary Norris says, I agree. He should have kept that under wraps and just surprised everybody with a big check. I love Jed. Uh, he doesn't get in the way no more. Uh, Niner fan since he was eight and 48 now. So 40 years of being a Niner fan, Gary. You've been through the ups, luckily, and you've been through the downs. Uh, you've seen all the quarterbacks, Montana, Young, Garcia, the Tim Rattays, the Cody Picketts, the JT O'Sullivans. You've lived through the glory years and through uh, this hell we are currently in <laughs> with no Super Bowls in the past 30. Um, but yeah, like, people say Jed hasn't learned. I disagree. Jed has learned a lot. Like, Jed York, for as much as I've kind of crapped on him for the last, you know, 35 minutes, like, I like Jed York. Like, Jed York isn't the owner that I grew up with anymore. Like, he is someone that I've come to respect. Whereas, during Harbaugh, it was like, you piece of crap, little child, like, all you are is a Nepo baby, you have this team for, you know, like, like, that was the sentiment towards him. And now it's like, okay, like, Jed's a grown man right? He's balding. Like, he's balding now. Like, he's a grown man. Like, but there are some times where you just wish he'd be a little quieter, <laughs> which is a lot more rare than it once was. Like, during the Harbaugh era, it was a disaster. Even a couple years ago, when it was the Dolphins game, and Jed York left the game when Jimmy G but snapped his ankle in half again, or got pulled out because his ankle was already hurt, and they forced him back in there, and he was like, yo, I can't play, and they were like, you're playing, he was like, okay, and he got hurt, Jed stormed off and left the stadium, like, we don't see those very often much, uh, and, like, when you hear Jed York's name, what do you think? You can think of the bad things, but this thing the last seven seasons, you really haven't heard Jed York's name. And that's kudos to Kyle and John. Like, they have took the mantle of the face of the franchise. They're not super emotional. They're stable people. Harbaugh, for as great as he is, is a little emotional. Um, and I think it's helped Jed be next to stability. Be able to grow, make a mistake with Harbaugh and Chip Kelly and Tom Sula, and also grow. Um, all that to say doesn't mean that sometimes you wish he would just go, Shh, Jed, just, just be a little quiet. Don't 
say this silent part out loud. We we know we're gonna pay Brock North a forty. Just just shh, shh. <laughs> like the the more you talk, the more it hurts us. <laughs> um, and Robbie makes a great point here. And again, I agree with this. It's crazy to talk Brock Purdy's contract before the season starts. Unnecessary pressure on him. Uh, Brock melted against the Ravens because he knew the MVP was online. Um, I don't think Brock melted because he knew the MVP was on the line. I think the Ravens are just good, and Brock didn't play well. And Brock played great against the Commanders in the playoffs, right? So, like, well, I wouldn't say great, but there was a lot of ups, a lot more ups and downs, (laughs) is what I'll say. Um, Brock was great in the first half of the Super Bowl. He, he was great against KC in that first half. Um, but I do think that first part is true. It is asinine to even start talking about Brock Purdy's contract, which we wouldn't be. Like, I won't lie to you. Like, we haven't done a show in a few days because there has been nothing to talk about, which at times is great. Great. We talked about John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan about IU a couple, weeks, a couple days ago, which is fine. That's news. There's updates in there. There hasn't been much to discuss. We're in that kind of awkward dead period of like waiting for the draft and some lingering free agents are signing here or there, but there really isn't much to discuss, right? Meanwhile, Jed York is like, you want to hear a funny story about Brock Purdy's contract? And you're just like, Jed, <laughs> like... Like, no, get off the cell box, brother. <laughs> get Someone get him. Someone get him off the stage. <laughs> like, please, get off the shed, Jed, please. Um, but yes, it is like talking about Brock Purdy's contract when he can't even sign one is a waste of time. Hence why Jed talking about it doesn't make any sense. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Like, who cares if you're asked about it? Like, we go... Everyone does this. We go through a day of life. How many people ask you, Hey, how you doing? Don't actually mean it. A lot of people. I do that. You've done that. You see a guy at the gym. You make eye contact. Give him a nod. What does it actually mean? Does it mean we're best friends? No. Hey, we're cool. Okay. You don't have to have a full-on conversation, my friend. You don't need to know my entire life what I had for dinner or lunch, it's none of your business. Like, Jed walked out there and said, hey, you want to know some dirt? People were like, uh, Jed, no, no, no one asked you, Jed. He was like, well, you're going to want to hear this. It's like, like, Jed, like, why? And he's like, Brock Purdy, $40 million. <laughs> it's like, okay. Like, thank you. Thank you for saying that, Jed York. You have maybe made Brock Marate's life even harder now. You have may, potentially have made Brock's negotiations a little bit tougher. Now, again, I think Brock gets $46 plus million on average in the next few years, uh, and deservedly so if he's great again. Um, I will say this, though. I will say this. If Let's say Brock Purdy has a bad year. Well, let's say he's subpar Brock Purdy. Let's say he feels more like a Dak Prescott. Empty calories, right? Derek Carr, you know, the the screen vulture. He just screen pass, screen pass, screen pass. We have 322 yards and four touchdowns. You lost 47 to 5, man. Like, (laughs) you have garbage time yardage, right? Um, Let's say that's Brock Purdy. Let's say his value plummets. You have now started... The conversation at $40 million. At least. At least. And again, I I think Brock gets paid, but we have also seen quarterbacks get paid. We've seen quarterbacks in San Francisco get paid with this regime. And in two years' time, them say, 
Wish we didn't do that. Man, he's missed three seasons of injuries. Oof. We've seen this exact same regime trade up for a quarterback. And in one year's time, two years' time, say, oh, he does not have it. And, and, and so, like, this is the first quarterback that they're all in. They completely buy into everything he preaches and sells. They buy into him as a player and a person. They are willing to put Brock as the face of the franchise for five, six years. More than Jimmy, more than Trey. They are full on on the Brock Purdy train until the wheels fall off. Great, as they should be. Let's say those wheels, or one wheel falls off. Okay? I don't think it will, but let's say it does for the sake of conversation. Um, you have now, and let's say with that, with with a bad Brock Purdy season, let's say his contract value falls lower than the 12th quarterback in football. Let's say it falls, I don't know, around a Derek Carr, an Aaron Rodgers, a Jared Goff, Baker Mayfield. And Brock's like, well, I'm better than Baker. Well, I'm better than Jared. I had one bad season. Really? Jared was awful two years ago. Baker, he stunk in Carolina. He got $33 million a year. And you've already mentioned the number 40. <laughs> well, um, 40 is the max. Like, you have set parameters on a contract, whether Brock's great or terrible this year. And I think he'll be great. Like, no one's saying Brock's going to be bad. But on the off chance he gets hurt again which has happened plenty of times with this regime, like, you have locked yourself into 40-plus no matter what now. Like, 40 is the baseline. And maybe it always was going to be that, but, like, you've also, in that same quote, said, Brock is going to ask for something that no one has ever asked for before. So, forget 40! <laughs> Like, if 40's the baseline, no one's ever asked for before. Burrow's making $55 million a year. You have simultaneously said 40 is the lowest contract we're going to pay for, and he may ask for $56 million, and we're not going to be shocked. Yeah, you may not be shocked. That's great. Be shocked by yourself, <laughs> in a quiet room, where you say, I can't believe Brock's asking for $56 million. You don't say it in front of the media. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, it just makes me, like, I'm someone who's very quiet. I'm someone who's very, like, reserved, like, won't talk to people mostly, like, I'm friendly, not a mean guy. I'm just like I just like to stick to myself sometimes, um, and I'm I'm fine staying inside all day. I like the outdoors, but like I'm I'm cool if I don't talk to a single person for a whole day. I'm good with that, right? And so like when I hear people, extroverts, you might say, go out and just say all these things and go to the media and just spill all their tea, I'm like, you could have just like not done that and like shut up. And kept it to yourself for one year's time. It's not like you couldn't have private meetings with Brock and John and, and Kyle and Prague and say, oh, Brock's going to ask for 40, isn't he? 56 might be on the docket, Prague. Budget for it. But instead, you're like, you know what? At the NFL owners meeting, which is one of the maybe five times anyone asks you a single question all year long, you decide to say, Brock? might ask for the most money we've ever seen in the sport. Like, I'm trying to wrap my head around the logic behind that. Like, it's not like Jed has a post-game press conference every Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. Like, I was shocked when they asked him questions as they were leaving for Vegas. I was like, oh, we're asking Jed stuff? Okay. Like, it's not like Jed's ever the one... Unless there is a press conference when a player has signed. And even then, John and Kyle lead those. <laughs> like Jed himself said, I just signed the check. So why are you talking about the check if you do none of the work? <laughs> if all it is is your name on it, why are you speaking on someone else's business? It'd be like, it'd be like the freaking, 
about the clothes department, talking about the pet food department. And I get Jed's the high up guy and he signs the pet. Clothes stick in clothes, brother. Pets stick in pets. Go stock some chewy bones. Clothes, go stock some pants. Let me do my thing. I'll make the contract. We'll talk to Brock. Jed, just be quiet and sign it. It's like it's like when you're little and you have to go on a field trip. And you're like, Mom, Dad, like I just need you to sign the permission slip for me to go. I don't want Mom and Dad going to the freaking school to ask all these questions and be like, Well, my kid better. I'll drive my kid. Like, no, just sign the thing and let me go. <laughs> like, you don't have to do anything. Just say yes. That's all Jed has to do is say yes. <laughs> Instead, he was like, you know what? I want to get more involved here. But when it comes down to it, do none of the work actual a- <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> like, Jed will do none of the work. Parag, John, Kyle, none of it. He just told them that this is the baseline, go. <laughs> it's like, Why? <laughs> Like, just sign, yes. That's all you have to do. You don't have to pack my lunch. Ain't got to give me a snack pack. Like, it's all paid for. It's all good to go. All set. He was like, you know what? $40 million. Right here. Right here, Brock. And Brock's like, that's starting point? Oh, we're going higher than that, my friend. He just, like, doesn't, like, it, and Robbie, maybe it is some reverse psychology. Like, maybe it works Brock contracts down. <laughs> He's like, 40's too high, guys. <laughs> you need to make it like 27. <laughs> My number's 13. Let's ask for $13 million a year. Like, maybe it is some weird diverse psychology, or it's just Jed York being dumb. <laughs> like, I know we're off the rails here, but like, it just like, uh, like, one plus one is not equal to. Like, in this case, Jed just... He walked outside and said, Ah, oh, what a wonderful day. How can I make it worse for the people I work for? Or, or work for me? And I'm sure Jed and Kyle and Prague are like, Jed, like, you only talk twice a year. And one of those is because we went to the Super Bowl. And you didn't even have to talk then. You wanted to talk. You don't have to really talk in owners' meetings. Just say a bunch of mumbo jumbo. We love our team. We're gonna draft great players. We wanna lock Ayuk up. Instead, he was like, "Oh, let's talk about Brock Purdy, who we can't even pay until next year." It's just Jed being Jed. I like Jed. I like Jed being Jed. He gave me a whole show today. Like, <laughs> like, it's like Woody Johnson and Robert Sala. They, you know, got into a heated argument at the owners' meeting, and Woody Johnson was like, "What the f are you talking about? No, we didn't. <laughs> like, me and John, me and Rob were playing freaking thumb, you know, thumb war, having a good time." And some guys like they were arguing and fighting. He was like, "No, like, I'd rather be Woody Johnson than <laughs> Jed York right now. Like, I'd rather be putting out a fire of, you know, we were having a heated argument at the owners' meeting and being like, that didn't happen. And if network is stupid." And Jed's like, I may have risen the, or rose the price, risen, Rosen, Arisen, whatever the word is, uh, the price of my franchise quarterback's annual value for no reason other than I couldn't stop talking. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, oh, Jed. Oh, Jed. Man. Like, is Brock Purdy worth $55 million? No. Is Joe Burrow worth that? No. <laughs> Like, is Dak Prescott worth... Like, is Dak Prescott the 12th best quarterback in football? Maybe. Sure. Wasn't last year, but maybe. Right? Like, is Kirk Cousins, at 35 years old, worth $45 million? Is Deshaun Watson, the pervert he is, worth $46 million? No. No. Could Brock ask... 456 and say I want to reset the market sure you're not gonna get that and if he does oh my god what are we doing and I love Brock but 56 million dollars for a non-Mahomes quarterback not a fan not a fan of that and even then Mahomes is making like 45 over or under Deshaun Kyler Hurts Jackson Herbert and Burrow like 
like Purdy's not making 55, 56. Purdy's not going to make, in my opinion, 52. If he makes anything, anything at the highest amount, 51 and a half makes sense. Just under Lamar Jackson and just over Jalen Hurts. That's the high end for Brock Purdy. High end. And if you get lucky, because you have a guy like Brock who is a great person that doesn't seem to be greedy, but let's also be honest, money can make people do some weird things. People have killed their friends over money. Now, Brock's not going to kill John or (laughs) those people, but it can make you do different things, right? Like, again, I'm a close to the chest kind of person. I am a Ron Swanson, bury your money in the backyard so no one knows it's there kind of person. Like, it's my money, don't touch it. Okay? Brock could be this uber conservative money guy who's like, you give me my money and don't touch it. Like, who knows? Who knows? He also could be like, you know what? I want to win. All I, like, my legacy isn't tied to my money. It's tied to winning a championship. My legacy isn't tied to me making... $52 million a year. It's tied to me holding a Lombardi trophy next year or in five years' time. Like, you know, it really just, like, not to say that we'll learn more about Brock Purdy when it comes to his contract, you know, as a person, right? Like, we know who Brock Purdy is. We, we know what he values. Hence, why we like him so much. Um, but I do think there are a lot of players that get criticized for you valued money over winning. You valued an extra $6 million over having XYZ player re-signed. Um, now, I don't think that's going to be Brock, but I do think that players think about that stuff. Like Eric Armstead admitted today that he thought about other players. In regards to taking a pay cut. You can't tell me Brock Purdy isn't sitting back like, man, if I make, let's say it's $52.5 million, I'm the fourth highest paid quarterback in the league right now. And we can't bring back Lenore and Ufunga and re-sign Mooney Ward or, I don't know, whoever else it is. An important piece to your team. Kittle, whoever it is. Chris McCaffrey, right? Like, if we can't bring those guys back... Like, I'm hurting my team. I'm making my team worse, right? Now, you can replace backups and even some starters, right? But when it comes to losing other stars, if Brock Purdy is going to get paid 52 and a half, let's say it's 56, resets the entire market, I guarantee you. I don't know if I'll do this. I doubt it. But there will be some people saying, How dare Brock Purdy make that much money? How dare he value money over winning? Now I think Brock values both, as he should. Go get paid. You deserve it. And like, it's funny because we'll talk about somebody else's money, right? Now, if you don't think corn dogs aren't going to be $35 once Brock gets $56 million, (laughs) you might get in a couple years. Uh, You can think twice, but... Like, a beer is going to be 45 bucks at Levi Stadium come that time. <laughs> but but the, all, all that to say that there will be some people that criticize Brock Purdy no matter what he does. Like, if Brock Purdy gets paid what the Niners are willing to pay him, people will blame him and say, well, you weren't like Tom Brady. Why didn't you take a team-friendly deal? Which is asinine. And again, can't even get paid until one year from now. And we're already talking about it. Like, I think for Brock, he values both. He wants to get paid accordingly, as he should. But I also think he's not going to be dumb. Like, he knows. Like, Brock is someone that is actually self-aware of who he is. There are a lot of guys that don't get it. Like, Dak Prescott, for as good as he is, does not... and, And I like Dak as a person. He doesn't get it. Kirk Cousins, great guy. Great guy. He gets it. He gets it. He really does get it. He knows I have to have Kyle Pitts, Drake London, a running game. Like, he knows he has to have that. Jalen Hurts, 
for as great as he is, he don't get it. And those are all great quarterbacks. No one's discounting their ability. But there's tiers. Brock, to many, is in that exact same tier. Hurts, Cousins, Goff. Like, Jared Goff, in my opinion, gets it. He knows. Because he had to get humbled from the Rams to Detroit. He gets it. It's not just about me. I have to have Amon Ra in this defense. Like, once Jared Goff's contract is up, I guarantee he ain't getting paid $50 million, $45 million. No way. No way. Like, there are quarterbacks that don't get it. Kyler, for as good as he is, doesn't get it. Deshaun will never get it. Like, Daniel Jones, Giants paid him. He didn't get it. The Giants didn't get that either, but, but like, Brock understands. Which is why I think, despite him getting paid, which he will get a massive chunk of money, rightfully so, he gets it. He understands, I need stars around me to win. I need Debo's and I need Ayuk's and Kittle's and McCaffrey's and I need to have a Trent Williams-like left tackle. I need to have Bosa and Warner and those guys pick me up. Like, Brock, his story lends credence to who he is and why he is the way he is. We had four years at Iowa, not a big name, last pick in the draft. He himself will tell you, I'm just along for the ride, man. Like, this is magical. I'm happy I'm here. I want to get paid justly. I'm just happy to be here. Like, this is all, and he'll say this because of God. That's, that's exactly what he'll say, because of God. And it's like, Brock is just riding this magic carpet of, this is my life, you're kidding me. Now, he's earned this, but you can tell Brock, he understands his role. He understands that it's not about him. Other quarterbacks, Dak, Jalen, Kyler, Deshaun, for as great as they might be, they will say, even Josh Allen to a certain degree, they don't get it. They don't get it. You need to have players around you. And all those guys are getting paid what teams willingly paid them. It's not a knock on their price tag. But it's to say that everybody needs, especially a player like Brock, that doesn't have this insane arm. He's amazing legs. And he's a great player. He doesn't have this X-factor physical talent. He knows he has to have players around him. He completely understands his value, his worth, and what he needs to succeed. And if he gets $56 million, what does that tell you? That San Francisco thinks more of him than most do, as they already will tell you that. Like, I just think, like, I think Brock Purdy, the word discount will get tossed around. I don't think it'll be a discount, but I do think we will, like, Brock Purdy as a person, I think will shine through this contract negotiation. I think it will. And I think whether it's a $2 million discount or a 5 or 10 whatever it might be, whatever money you want to put in that sentence, I do think we will see Brock Purdy say, it's not about me. Yeah, I want to get paid, but it's not about me. I have to have my boys around me. I want to see other guys get paid too. And in a very different way, that's what Armstead did. Now, it took Armstead to leave, but like Armstead and like Purdy, they aren't just thinking about themselves. Armstead said, if I take this pay cut, what does this do for the next guy in my shoes? Well, you're not, you're not, you're not team friendly. You're not a team player. Insert player here. And that, and that can turn a player against you and be like, what are you, I gave you nine years of my career. Like, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan do think Armstead is a team player. They love Derek. They wanted to keep him. They just couldn't. Armstead said, I have to look out for myself and my fellow player so they can get paid as well. And in a very different way, I think Brock Purdy does the exact same thing. Now, who knows how much? Who knows if it's one less year of a contract or if it's just an insane structure of let's push all of it to the end and keep my cap hit as low as it can be and be open to constant restructures. Maybe that's it. 
Maybe it isn't the day of signing, but it's throughout the entire contract. We continually see Brock Purdy push that money down the line. Maybe that's the case. But I do think for Brock Purdy, even if Jed says $40 million and opens his mouth and shouldn't have, I, I do think we will see Brock Purdy as a person shine through these negotiations and in his contract the entire way through. He knows he has to have 52 other men next to him to win it all. Listen to any press conference he has. He rarely ever mentions himself. And if he does, it's, I have to get better. I need to be better. Not many other guys will say that. Brock Purdy will. I think it'll shine through in these contract negotiations once he can sign next year. <laughs> All that to say, thank you so much for watching, listening. Information Man Show, Jason Hurley, Robbie, I really appreciate all the comments. Ezra, Gary, again, everyone, so much. Prime Sports Media, uh, Bobo, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much uh, for chiming in on the YouTube chat, on Twitter, Facebook, whatever you guys are watching on. want to ask you kindly to like, share, and subscribe, whether it's on the visual platforms, mainly on YouTube, but if you're watching or listening on Spotify, Apple Podcast, you subscribe on there, leave a review. It is the cheapest, freest way to help the show grow. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to follow us on social media at 49ers underscore access is the Twitter or X. 49ers dot access is the Instagram. And today was MLB opening day. I am will be going to a baseball game very, very, very soon. And when I do so... I'm going to make a new Seat Geek account and use my own promo code <laughs> to save some money. And I want you to do the exact same thing. Go to SeatGeek.com, make a brand new account, and use our promo code 49ersaccess. 49ersaccess at SeatGeek.com and save yourself $20 off your first purchase. There are tickets that are 60 bucks a pop, $120. You can get those down to 100 and sit at the front row at Oracle Park. Man, that's a good price. You can watch some Giants play the D-backs of the Pirates. It's a great price. Go watch some baseball at a cheaper discounted price. It'll pay for your parking. It'll pay for your beer. It'll pay for your nachos. Not all at once, but it'll pay for one of those things. <laughs> Everything's so expensive now. Man, man. What a wonderful night. Thank you guys again. Jason, have a great one. Hope to hear from you soon. Bobo, we're hoping for a sixth. Hoping for a sixth, but stay tuned next Monday. This coming Monday after Easter. Have a wonderful Easter. If you have kids, hide some eggs. Steal some eggs. Eat some eggs. Do something with the eggs. Whatever you want to. Uh, have a wonderful Easter. But next Monday, this coming Monday, Mock Draft Monday. First one of the NFL Draft season going to do one each week leading up to the NFL draft so stay tuned don't forget to like share and subscribe and as always my name is Sterling Bennett until next time stay faithful <laughs>